We're under the wings of Concord and I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell yes. us why you're here with Bulldog. Well, my name's David Barsley. I'm Marketing Director at Classic Motor Cars in Bridge North, CMC, and we've restored Bulldog for its owner. Fantastic, and you've brought it here today looking after it. Tell us we, about the car. Well, the car was going to be the fastest production car that Aston Martin had ever built, um, and that was 1980, and Aston Martin said, it's going to reach 200 miles an hour. It didn't reach 200 miles an hour, it reached 191 miles an hour, uh, and they said, well, we'll do some more testing. Um, I think what then happened was that Aston Martin ran out of money, they had other priorities, as in those days they did. So um, it, it was, wasn't for sale, it was sitting in Newport Pagnell, and somebody came along, and I think he was a Middle Eastern gentleman, who said, I'd like to buy it. And there was some toing and throwing at Aston Martin about whether they should sell it and how much for. And he drove out of the uh, Newport Pagnell with the car. And again, we believe that on the way back, I'm not sure where the car was going, but the engine blew up. Um, the car then sort of disappeared for a while. So it disappeared from view. Um, it was in the Middle East at one point. It was back here at one point. It was found two years ago, just over two years ago now, in America. Um, I believe by R.M. Sotheby's, who contacted Richard Gauntlet, um, Victor Gauntlet's son, um, who has a client and a friend called Philip Sarafin, and Philip Sarafin purchased the car. Um, Is he the current owner? He's the current owner, and he decided that he wanted the car totally restored and rebuilt, and he wanted the car to do the 200 miles an hour, but it never did. Um, We've been testing it. It's been tested with the Royal Navy at the Royal Naval Air Station at Yeovilton. I think we got it up to about 168 miles an hour. Um, it's producing over 100, it's a 1,000 brake horsepower, so we have no doubt that it will do that. But it's the original engine which we've just strengthened. Um, so I think in the day, um, there were a lot of things that perhaps they didn't knew, need to do in those days that we have done now to make it safe and so that so it will do the, that speed. So, so it's so. certainly a very big lump and it's beautifully mid-mounted, isn't it? Abs I mean, absolutely. The, the way that it is uh, put into the chassis is, is, is remarkable, really. I mean, it puts... Um, it, it's a fantastic car to drive, um, and I think everybody's surprised when they see it. Um, w w one of the things that I think constantly annoys us is people look at it and say, ah, it's a DeLorean, and we have to point out that, of course, it's not a DeLorean, um, but it's a, it's a William Towns car. Mm. I've just uh, uh, met Craig. So, Craig, you've been involved in the restoration of this car. Yeah. Uh, tell us what your input has been. Uh, I did all like the electric side of it, so rebuilding all the loom, which was a mess. Uh, we changed it from mechanical fuel injection because it wasn't reliable I and mean, you couldn't get it to actually run an engine like this. So it's gone to like a modern fuel injection system and it controls everything to keep it cool and keep on top of everything, keep it all on track. D dare I ask how many miles to the gallon it would do or how many gallons to the mile? Oh, it's, it's, it's terrible. It is? It, it, it's really bad. Well, I suppose if you have to ask the question, um, you shouldn't <laughs> be driving the bulldog. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when we was at it on the, doing the tune-up on the dyno, running it all up and stuff, we was constantly running back, backwards and forwards to the fuel station. So it was just like and and the best output of power you had from it? Uh, enough to kill the dino. So we haven't actually physically wow. got a proper number from it because the dino wouldn't take it. I don't know whether this was on my bucket list, but sitting here in Bulldog is is quite an experience and it's something I won't forget. Uh, pity the barriers are up and pity... Oh, the keys are in it. That's pretty fantastic. Right, it's the driving position is actually quite good. The visibility is good. Um, pedals are a little bit far enough away but it's it has a a road race driving position which is great very comfortable well supported as you would want with a car of this power uh, the decor interior is is minimalistic really uh, but you don't want to be looking at a lot of dials and gauges and fiddling around with knobs when you're doing this sort of speed so fantastic uh, the passenger seat is empty and that's the way I'd like it really <laughs> What an experience. Uh, roll on a test drive is all I can say. Please. Uh, the key's just there, so as long as yeah, it's out, that it, should be, yeah, it should be neutral. So, yeah, yeah, that feels neutral. Yeah. 
Right, so start button. Uh, no, just turn it. Let just the fuel come through. Any yep. throttle? Nope, don't touch it. You can hear it, I'm sure, you probably can't hear me, but it, uh, it, it's smooth, but it's vibrating, and I'm not sure, I'm looking for the rev counter. I, yeah, the display is, is fairly good. We have enough fuel for about 10 seconds, I should imagine. Um, it sounds fantastic. Well, that's the second bucket list and the third one we will be to actually drive it. Hopefully when they're testing it, uh, I might be allowed to have a sit in it. Probably won't be allowed to be doing 200 miles an hour. I believe Darren Turner's got that job. Uh, lucky Darren. But, wow, thank you Bulldog team for letting me drive it and or sit in it. And thank you to the owner for allowing it to be here at Brooklands today on this amazing amazing celebration of Aston Martins. Terrific. I'm not getting out of here. Bye.